Hey there guys, today we are rolling down south to Clackamas, Oregon. We uh, picked up this container from Tacoma yesterday and taking it over to Fred Meyer, Clackamas, Oregon. And look at that, no check engine light. Uh, it's a light load. That's my suspension gauge. Like 15, no more than 20,000 pounds. That's my front air ride axle. I like to cruise around 30 to 40 PSI. Uh, it, it's the most smoothest, around 30 to 40. If I'm hauling a heavy load, I'll bump it up maybe to like 40 to 50 PSI on the front steer axle. Uh, but yeah. All right, so we actually got it backed in. And one other thing I want to mention is what's nice about containers is it's a power only. Most of the time, you don't need a chassis or trailer. It's just your truck. Whoever you're working with, your dispatcher, if you're leased on to somebody, they always provide a trailer the chassis to pick up containers. For example, I'm using this one, which is a combo chassis, and it lets me use uh, with 20 foot containers or 40 foot containers, or I could put actually two 20s. Uh, so that's one plus about containers is it's power only most of the time. So here I just busted out one of my pay slips from one of my dispatchers i'm not going to share every single rate i get but this is on average this is an average what a dispatcher will pay you for a container move so what we got right here this is one 355 dollars this is one round trip from seattle to five uh i was able to bust these three out in one day this is without standby but they actually were nice enough to include standby in each one of them uh, but 355 bucks a trip. I was able to make thousand dollars a day Just hauling these three for that day uh, Let's say the ports are busy, you know, and you could only do two Well, you'll have some standby which pays about fifty dollars after one free hour for detention You'll still come out to close to eight hundred to a thousand dollars after standby for those two trips so local or regional like today i actually drove out 150 miles uh tacoma to clackamas oregon a thousand dollars but i just had to spend 200 dollars on fuel these three trips cost me 1000 bucks on fuel uh, 100 bucks on fuel sorry not a thousand bucks on fuel uh 100 bucks on fuel for these three trips or today i had to drive out 150 miles that's 300 miles round trip and i'm spending a lot more on fuel it comes out to the same but i'm also putting more wear and tear on my truck so those who say local doesn't pay good local pays pretty pretty good compared if you compare it to regional and i5 quarter or over the hill it pays really good just watch out for the dispatchers that could use you especially i had a few where i leased on like Premier, they were paying 175 to 225 uh, a trip, and it just wasn't it just wasn't profitable. So watch out for the dispatchers you guys work for. Also, don't agree to cheap rates. Negotiate all the time. But containers, containers, it could pay good if you try. Try to find the right dispatcher. So there you go, guys. Hopefully that was a little bit of helpful if you guys are trying to become an owner operator here in the Pacific Northwest. And if you guys are new to my channel, check out how I made my own air ride kit. Still rolling good. No tire wears. Love it. And of course guys, my favorite part about being an owner operator is you could do whatever you want. Check out what I did over here. This used to be a cupboard. I took all that out I was able to fit a regular size fridge, 18 inch wide. Uh, I got my uh, inverter running. I put the inverter, it's actually in behind there. It's got good airflow. <laughs> I made a little out of MDF board, a little table. So I could have uh, maybe put a Keurig or something right there. Got my microwave and all that working. That's the favorite part about being an owner operator. You could do whatever you want to your truck. It's your truck. You know, when I was a driver, I wasn't able to actually do this stuff. <laughs> that guy said, no, don't put an inverter. I don't want you burning down my truck. So, and we 
get in a bypass today. That's a good way to end a Thursday. Favorite scale, Ridgefield, exit 14. Here's one of those days where you got more work after work. So I uh, bought new eight new drag tires. I'm gonna install them myself. I got the two bars. I actually bought off a Les Schwab guy uh, for 20 bucks. But yeah, stay tuned. Let's change these tires. So now if you guys are a professional tire changer, please don't laugh. As I've only done this a few times. I'm not a professional yet. So after changing a few tires, now I know that the key is lubrication. The better you lubricate it, the easier it'll be. Dry tire, especially I used a little bit of soap. It dried out too fast and it just it just didn't let me put on the tire as nicely as if I just used uh, a solid oil, which is a, it's a type of grease. You could get, there's actually tire grease they sell they, in the buckets makes it a lot easier to put on a tire. So this is actually one of my favorite parts is using starting fluid because it would just leak out air, wouldn't let me pump it up this way seated right away поднял подушки и поехал все закончили резина новая темыч поехал парковаться